You know, one of the most frustrating, confusing, aggravating moments that people have experienced in relationships is when their partner tells them, let's take a break, <laughs> all right? I need some space, give me some time. It, it creates such a, such a negative response in most cases because it, you, you don't know where this is coming from sometimes, you don't know what's gonna happen, you're kind of left in this link, in this gray area, so to speak, and that lack of clarity can create a lot of anxiousness and, and fear and all these kinds of issues. But the reality is that th though I would hope no one has to reach that point, the reality is that many do, where they either do, they hear their partner say that, or maybe they're even feeling that way. But I want to focus on when it's a man telling you that you need space. Well, that I'm sorry, when he needs space, okay? Now, I know some of y'all may think, well, if he says he needs space, he can take his behind on, and, and that's it from there. Like, there is no break. You know, some people don't believe in that. And I, and I hear you, but, you know, the reality is that once you're in that situation, it's not that simple for most people. Uh, it's a lot more difficult to understand which way you should go with things and, you know, what's this, what does this ultimately mean? And so I want to give you some guidance because, again, it, it happens. It happens probably too often. Now, before I get into the first one, actually, let me mention what the first thing is, right? And that is do not jump to negative conclusions, all right? Now, what typically happens is when, when we have not healed from our past issues and disappointments, okay, and someone, our partner, tells us something like they need space, it's very easy for all that past stuff to rise up to the top and add to an already frustrating, fearful, uh, anxious situation. And this is why it's so important that we heal from our past so that we don't bring those previous issues, that baggage into the current situation because now we may react more poorly to the current moment, not necessarily because of the moment itself, but all the things that have accumulated over the years that we haven't resolved. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm a huge believer, of course, in getting counseling, going to therapy, getting that assistance. Because listen, there's gonna be times where we may think we're good, we may think we have nothing that we're holding on to, but if you were just to walk or allow yourself to sit down with someone, you might be surprised. And I think it's good to just get like a checkup, like the same way you might go to the doctor, you might think, no, nah, I'm good, just gonna get that yearly checkup, and then you find out there is something wrong. Well, I think we should have a yearly checkup when it comes to mental health. And so that's why I really think you need to check out BetterHelp. First, I wanna thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And BetterHelp, which is B-E-T-T-E-R, help, is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. It's an amazing resource that can help you with a situation where you're dealing with a man that isn't trying to get married, stringing you along, and you don't know how to handle it. To get started, just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, and that's Better H-E-L-P, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom picked by you, uh, more scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. So go to our sponsor, betterhelp.com, B-E-T-T-E-R, help.com forward slash Stefan Speaks and get 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp. And they will match up with a therapist who is going to listen and help you. So now, once you've gotten your past issues resolved, hopefully, right, you've gotten that assistance, you still have to make sure that you don't jump to negative conclusions if a man ever asks you for space. Because 
number one, it's, it's not always what you may think it is, okay? It's very easy to assume this means he doesn't want to be with you anymore, assume that he's having second thoughts about you. And listen, I'm not saying that there aren't some situations that that is true, that is actually what's going on. But it's unfair to jump to that conclusion because in other situations, it is an inner conflict with him or it is something that he's struggling with that he doesn't know how to handle the relationship and his personal life. You know, one of the common problems with a lot of men, especially if you guys are in the early stages of your relationship, is men already struggle to open up, right? But even more so if they feel like the opening up will expose weakness or what may look like weakness to their partner. And so that fear of losing their, their woman's respect causes many to feel like they cannot bring these problems to you they, or they don't even want to put those problems on you. So that may cause some individuals to retreat. Now, I am in no way saying that's the healthy way for him to do it. I just want you to be aware that if you jump to the negative conclusion that he just doesn't want to be with you anymore, when in reality it's just him trying to battle whatever he's trying to battle, now you've added more unnecessary pressure and negative energy to the situation, all right? So jumping to that conclusion does not help you in any way. It serves no good. Whether you are right or wrong, it does not serve you any good. It has a greater chance of doing more damage rather than actually helping you. So I know it's difficult. It's easier said than done, but we have to be mindful of, and, and this really applies to a lot of different situations because there's just so many times where couples or people jump to negative conclusions when something happens in their relationship rather than allowing themselves to hear out their partner and give them the benefit of the doubt. And when it comes to giving the benefit of the doubt, let me highlight this, because I understand, listen, a lot of y'all have been through situations where men lied or they try to manipulate and play you. But this is why I always say, you have to consider the, the, the bigger picture here. If up to this point, he has been a good, honest man, then does he not deserve the benefit of the doubt? Now, if he's been toxic, if he's been unhealthy, not only is that reason for you not to believe him, but that's reason for you to not even just let it be a break. Let it be a break up. OK, like let it be done at that point, because he hasn't shown you good in order to warrant just taking a break for the sake of getting back together. But if he's been that great guy, then, yes, give him the benefit of the doubt and let's continue to work from there. All right. So now another thing I need you to do if a man tells you he needs space is to set up a time frame and a checkup process. Okay. So here's what I mean. I do not believe in these indefinite breaks where we have no clarity as far as how long this is going to draw drag out. Right. I think that's very unfair. Even if we don't know for sure when, and let's just say I'm the man and I'm telling you I need a break. Even if I don't know for sure when I'll be at a point where I'm ready to fully embrace our relationship, I think at the very least there needs to be a time frame of when we will revisit this, okay? That's the checkup. When are we going to now sit down and see has progress been made? What's going on? Where do we stand? Are we a certain percentage close to making it get back together? Or even have we swayed more into the idea of this isn't going to work or do we at least feel like, OK, this I really want this to work. I really want to be with you. I just need a little bit more time. OK, so we need some kind of structure, because if there is no structure, I always say lack of clarity will create chaos. All right. And so what I've seen in situations where there is no understood time frame well, now it just leaves more room for the mind to run wild, to create negative scenarios in, in your head, to get more anxious because you don't know when this is going to end, um, to keep people in a holding pattern that can create more toxic energy within themselves and in their life. Okay. So 
again, I think if he can't at least give you that, that's a huge red flag. Like, like I, I don't think it's wrong to work with someone who feels like they need space for a moment. But I do think if they cannot give you proper, again, structure, then that's where, no, I, they, they don't just get to have a free pass to just say, oh, well, I'll let you know when I've changed my mind or when I'm ready. No, I don't work like that, partner. All right, now before I move on to the next one, this is, I'm sneaking in a bonus early because it's just weighing on me and I feel the need to mention it. And it wasn't originally on my list, but I have to say it. So in addition, and you can add this to number one, in addition to not jumping to negative conclusions, please be careful with who you go talk to about this stuff, all right? Because what I've seen happen is Sometimes you're able to handle giving the benefit of doubt, not jumping to any negative conclusions. You, you can manage it, right? But then you go talk to your friend or you go talk to your sister or your mother or whoever, maybe even a guy friend. And they're the one who jumps to negative conclusions. They're the ones that's telling you, oh, no, that's unacceptable. You can't do that. And now they ruin or they make it much more difficult for you to be able to manage this in a way that you and your partner could potentially still work this thing out. All right. So you've got to be very careful with who you allow into a scenario like this, who you are taking guidance from, you know, be mindful of if you still want to share with them, then you got to go in with the mindset of. I'm sharing with them because that's my friend or my family member and I share everything with them, but I'm not going to let their perception dictate my actions in this situation. All right. That's unfair. You, you, the only outside influence, in my opinion, that should be dictating your actions is God. That's it. Other than that, other people are just not going to understand and people have a tendency to speak out of their own bias to interject themselves in the situation and say what they would do, but it's not about what they would do. It's about what would be best for you to do. So just wanted to put that out there, but let, let's keep this going. All right. So another thing to do when uh, a man tells you he needs space, and this may be a difficult one for some of you. Okay. It is to try to really understand and consider how he's feeling. Okay. Now, the reason why I say this is because, again, it is very easy when our partner or anyone brings us news that we don't like, that we uh, internalize it and we make it all about us. And now we get so caught up in our feelings that we are dismissing them. Now, again, if this individual is just playing games, this person has not been a good boyfriend, good man to you up to this point, I understand why you're going to be less likely to consider his feelings. But again, that serves no purpose here. It doesn't make anything better. If he's that kind of guy, then this might be an opportunity to just walk away completely. But if he's been a good man and now you make it all about you, once again, all you've done is add more stress to him. All you've done is make it harder for him to open up to you in the future. So like, let's just say one, he decides to change his mind because you're taking this so hard and you're making it all about you. He backs down from the whole break thing, but that's not really healthy because if he genuinely in his heart feels like he needs a step back and now essentially forces himself to not do it, to make you happy, to appease you. Well, now he's at conflict within himself and chances are that will now turn into other negativity within the relationship. It could turn into resentment. It could turn into a lot of other problems. Okay. So we, we don't really want that to be the case. Or even if he takes the break still, now he feels like when I'm generally feeling a certain kind of way, I can't talk to you about it because all I'm going to get is a negative response and you not trying to understand where I'm coming from. All right. Now, granted, in order for a man to expect or not even expect in order for a man to desire for you to be more understanding of his feelings, he needs to do a, a good job of communicating 
to some extent what's going on with him. And I know that's where it gets really difficult for a lot of guys and it adds to the potential of the chaos because a lot of situations where the man needs a break, he may know why he needs this break, but he's afraid to say it to you, right? So let's just say, for example, this is just one example. Do not jump to this conclusion. This happens to you. I'm just throwing it out there, right? Let's just say he feels like he needs a break because on one end, he loves you and views you as his future wife. But on another end, he's never had a chance to really be single and enjoy himself as, you know, his own man being out there. Not necessarily to be in these streets and sleep around, but just the freedom that comes with just walking in singleness for a little while. And now he's at conflict and he wants to make sure, okay, I am, I can fully commit to this and give my all to this woman because I do feel like she's the one. I just need to make sure this, the fact that I haven't been single truly yet, isn't going to come back to haunt me. That's something that can be very difficult for a man to communicate to a woman because of a woman hears. I, I just want to be single. For, I, I think I don't know if I want to be single for a little while. She thinks you want to sleep with these women. She thinks you want to be in these streets. She's not going to think, oh, he just wants freedom and to see what it's like. No, no, no. There's a natural inclination to think he either has another woman or he's going after other women, right? And so men then, rather, instead of just saying it, it's like, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I just, I'm feeling confused. And so now being vague creates a lack of clarity for you, which now makes it more difficult for you to understand how he's feeling. So I get, this is where it gets tough. So I, I would say, or I would encourage you as a woman, if you're ever facing this situation, is to, to let that man know, listen, whatever it is, be honest with me. He's going to feel like it's a trap. I'm just letting you know right now. He's going to feel like it's a trap. So I'm not saying it's going to automatically work, but letting him know, listen, I know that sometimes these are moments that are difficult to communicate because you might be worried about how I'm going to take it. I, 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 I rather us have openness and transparency and I will do my best to understand where you're coming from and not react negatively to it. All right. And then if you say that and he actually does open up more, you better not <laughs> you you better not react negative. No matter how much you don't like it, take a deep breath, hear him out, you know, and just try to work through that moment without turning it into something really bad because then you shut down the ability for you two to communicate better going forward. Especially if you guys end up staying together at some point or getting back together and trying now to have a long-term relationship. So all that to say, I know it can be difficult, but really try to understand where he's coming from. It doesn't mean now, it does not mean your feelings does not matter. It does not mean suppress how you feel. It just means do not allow that to overrun him in that moment. You got to strike a balance of understanding him, hearing him out, but there's nothing wrong with you. Like, for example, in this situation, let's just say this is scaring the hell out of you. There's nothing wrong with you saying, listen, I just need you to know this is scary to me. I, I, I don't know how to feel about this right now. I'm trying to be understanding and hear you out, but I need to let it out that I'm also struggling too. There's nothing wrong with that. So I want you to be open. I want you to be transparent, but do not allow that to overrun him to where now his feelings are dismissed. All right, so let's keep this moving. And the next thing you need to do uh, when a man or if a man ever tells you he needs a break is to establish boundaries with communication. OK, so again, one of the common themes that that I see in these situations is people not knowing, OK, well, are we supposed to be talking every day? Should I fall back? You know, should I be ignoring his calls right now? And they're, usually they're getting advice from, in this scenario, other women, friends. Oh, just ignore him. Don't call. And like, we don't need to be playing games. What we need to be doing is when, when there is a discussion about having a break, we need to discuss all the angles and parameters included to make sure we are on the same page and we understand how we are going to navigate this. And so 
communication is a big thing. Are we talking daily? Which I would argue if you're taking a break, that does not need to be daily conversation. I, I think doing that creates a scenario where, you, you know, it's not that we want to scare this man literally into the idea of, well, he may lose you. And I'll, and I'll touch more on that a little bit later. But we also don't want him to be so comfortable in the sense that you're still there in the same capacity as a girlfriend, even though he's taking a break from the commitment of the relationship. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is a prop. This will only shoot yourself in the foot because if, for example, you know, whatever it is he's battling is this very difficult thing he needs to face. For some reason, what's coming to me, an example, is let's just say he has issues with his family, his parents, right? And let's just say they're, they're at conflict with who he has chosen you to be with. And that has created an environment where he doesn't know how to handle it. And he's just like, okay, I need to step back to figure out how I'm going to manage this or what I'm going to do. I, I don't know. All right, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I just lost my train of thought and I don't know. I just completely forgot why I used that example. All right, so forgive me. I just want to be real. Forgive me. Let me just do my best to just keep this going, okay? So I don't know why I was talking about the parents, but the bottom line is, we, we've got to understand how often are we going to be talking. Oh, that I think this is where I was going with it. So you, you don't want the man to be so comfortable to where now, let's just say that the issue is his parents, and that's a very difficult issue for him to face. Now, if you're continuing the capacity as a girlfriend, talking to him daily, still making sure he's good, maybe you give, give, sending him food, whatever the case may be, that creates a level of comfort that de-incentivizes him facing the harder issue of confronting his parents, okay? Whereas you not being there anymore, if he really loves you and now you are not there because you guys are taking this break, it is more likely to push him, to give him that extra motivation to say, yo, I gotta, I gotta face my parents now because I want my woman back. You know what I'm saying? I always say this quote, if your absence isn't enough to motivate him, your presence never will. So essentially, you being there is not the way you're gonna see this man's gonna step up. It's you taking that step back, truly. And I know that can be tough, but that's what has to be done. So going back to establishing the boundaries of communication, I do not think it should be every day. I'm even skeptical of it being weekly. I think depending on how long the break is gonna be or the checkup is, I would say two weeks to a month. Now that's just my personal suggestion, all right? You are still free to decide whatever you decide with that man if this ever comes about. Hopefully it doesn't, but if it ever does. But I do think it needs to be spread out, so to speak. I also think that we need to be mindful of, all right, are, are we, when we do have conversation, are we gonna talk like everything's all good or are we only having conversation to basically do the checkup? All right, where are things, where, where are you with things right now? How's everything, all right, cool. All right, you're not ready yet? All right, boom. Now we're back on hiatus again. And maybe each checkup, all right, how much more time? And now, let me say this, I didn't say it earlier. You, you don't have to just go off whatever time frame he wants. Don't, don't get it twisted, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you have your feelings, you have what you're comfortable with, be honest about what you can handle. If, for example, he's like, I don't know, this might take months. And you're thinking, hell no, <laughs> like I can't do months. That's not gonna work for me. There's nothing wrong with saying, listen, I, I want you to you know, do what you need to do, but I can only handle 30 days. I'm just throwing out a number. So if after 30 days, we can't figure this out, then we just gotta go our separate ways, all right? Now, if he later on in life comes back around, I always believe that the, you don't have to shut the door on somebody forever if there's something genuine there, but you don't need to be staying in that holding pattern past whatever time you feel like that's enough for me, okay? So all that to get to, all that to say, you gotta establish those boundaries with how we're communicating, how often, all those things, so that we don't have a lot of um, miscommunication involved through this process. All right, so now 
another thing to do when a man tells you uh, he needs space is establish boundaries with other people. Okay. So, um, I wasn't going to use this, but I'm, I'm just going to use it. <laughs> There's a show some of y'all might be familiar with uh, called Friends, right? And in the show Friends, there was a situation where the couple, Ross and Rachel, they went on a break, right? And during the quote-unquote break, I believe it was the man, Ross, ends up sleeping with another woman. Now, in his mind, break is... We're, you know, we're single, essentially. We're free to do what we do. In, the, in Rachel's mind, the woman's mind, it, no, that was unacceptable. And that ended up being like this whole thing throughout the, the whole show, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. The point is, like, it's very easy for people to not be on the same page when it comes to these quote-unquote breaks and then end up doing things that make matters worse. And... And you can make an argument for either side because on one end, there are people who believe break means we're single during this time. We're single, but we still have a willingness and desire to potentially get back together. Whereas to other people, it's like, no, no, no. We are just on a, a temporary hiatus that we are still in this pseudo relationship or at least a agreement with each other, a level of commitment that doesn't allow for either of us to now go deal with someone else. Whichever side you're on, you need to communicate that. And y'all need to make sure there's an agreement on how we are handling other people. Are we allowed to see others or not? If, if anything happens, does that disqualify us getting back together? We need to discuss all these things so that, again, it's not one of those situations where, oh, well, I didn't know. I didn't think that's what you meant by break. Rather than, no, no, we had the rules set and this is what it is. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to also bring it back to the including other people. I, I really do think it is in the best interest of a couple to establish with each other, listen, if we're doing this, we don't need to be inviting a bunch of different people into this situation. We don't need to be running and telling everybody. That's Because again, this might be temporary, so why even in, why bring this, this piece of information to people unnecessarily who now, even if you guys get back together, there becomes this blemish in their head, right? Now, it, it can, in some situations, push those individuals to be more negative about your relationship even when y'all get back together because to them it's, oh, well, you, you know, he asked for a break. He ain't serious about you or whatever they come up with in their head. So to me, because this is a temporary arrangement, I would resist the urge to include people and, and let them know what our business is, all right? And so discussing that and laying that out, though we can't control what the other person does, I think doing that would be best. All right, so we got a couple more. This one could have been the last point, but I, I had to mention it here and then I'll have another one for you. So the other thing to do when a man tells you he needs a break is for you to be prepared for things to end. Now, I said prepared. I did not say jump to that conclusion. I know that can be a difficult line to walk, but understand the difference is we are not assuming it will end. We are not projecting that onto the situation, but we do have to understand that we are not guaranteed this is going to work out, all right? And I think that when we're trying to prepare ourselves, one, we start with, do we even belong here? I I've alluded to it, or I've mentioned it a couple times earlier in the video. For some of you, this was a man who was already being, whether it be toxic, unhealthy, wasn't pouring into your needs. There was already a lot of issues that have been either ignored, swept under the rug, whatever the case may be. And so now him asking for a break really for that kind of situation is your opportunity to end, not just be prepared for it to end, to actually end it. All right. And, but part of that preparation is like, 
asking yourself, has this even been a good relationship? Has things been healthy? Or do we have a strong enough foundation of genuine connection? We uh, share the same values. We're in alignment with each other. We just hit a bump in the road, okay? Versus no, we don't have those things. We've been trying to hold on and maybe this is now the time to realize we need to move in a different direction, all right? But here's a, uh, let me give you something else to consider. Sometimes it could be that person, that guy, that everything has been great, that it hasn't been an unhealthy, toxic relationship, and yet he still reaches this point for whatever reason, which now makes it a much harder pill to swallow when it comes to preparing yourself for the idea that this could be done because nothing in you wants this to be over. Nothing in you wants to see this not work out. And so being prepared in that moment, in that kind of situation, is about trusting God. Is about going within spiritually and saying, you know what, whatever God has for me, however this works out, I'm going to trust that God will have better for me. Better is, and better can be it working out or better can be it breaking apart because maybe it needs to come back together at a later time or maybe though we really want this, this really isn't best for us the way we want to believe, all right? And we have to trust that if we navigate this situation through God's guidance, our guidance specifically for us as an individual, then we have to trust that everything will be okay. Okay does not mean the outcome we think we want or we're hoping for. Okay means whatever is truly best in the grand scheme of things that maybe right now we can't even see. And again, I know that's easier said than done. I know that's difficult, but you have to have that preparation and that peace within you because if not, if things do end, you will become much more devastated. You, it will be harder for you to bounce back. You, you, it, will, it will create a level of damage that now will carry over to other potential relationships. You know, So we, we want to minimize that as best as possible with the preparation of understanding, all right, whatever is truly best, it w- what will be will be essentially, as long as we're doing what God wants us to do in the situation. And now the last but not least thing I have to tell you is that when a man tells you He needs space. And let's say you go forward with giving him that space. Only get back together if the issues have been resolved. All right. So one of the biggest mistakes I see people make, whether it be through a break, whether it be people broke, broke up, you know, something bad happened, whatever the case may be, is getting back together. But nothing's actually changed. Saying I'm sorry changed nothing. All right. Saying I've changed my mind, changed nothing. Saying, no, I'm ready now, changed nothing. If you're ready now, how, why, what, what was resolved for you to get there? So if, for example, I mentioned earlier, he has an inner conflict of wanting possibly to live single for a little while. If he says, no, I'm good now. Okay. What did you do or what revelation did you have to come to realize I don't need to do that single thing anymore, okay? Because without that, if it hasn't been resolved, it will come back to haunt y'all, plain and simple. But again, not just the issues of why this man asks for a break, but all the issues. So my thing is, okay, let's just say he feels like he lost himself, he needs to figure himself out, right? And now he comes back and says, you know what? I did some inner work and I'm ready for this. I'm good. But before there was even a break, you guys had horrible communication. You guys were not on the same page and you felt neglected in the relationship. What point is there in getting back together because he said, I'm good now, if those things haven't been fixed? It doesn't make any sense. So you got to make sure that when there is a break being taken, And now he is coming back to get you back. You got to lay out, okay, these were the issues that I recognize or I know of in this this relationship because you can't do anything about what you may not be aware of, but this is what you know about. How have we resolved these things? Or how can we resolve these things before I say I'm willing to accept you back into my life? And then if if they can be resolved, okay, great. Then you can move forward, all right? And, And I have to say this, you know, again, 
I know some people have this idea of once an ex, always an ex, and there's no coming back. I don't do second chances, all this stuff. I'm just going to tell those of you who think like that, reconsider and make it about, is this person someone that I truly have a connection with and can be best for me or are they not? It's not about what we tried once before. It's about, is there something really there? Can this actually work? Is this where God wants me to be? If that's the case, then be willing to reopen your heart to that person. You know what I'm saying? And the reality is that if you have shut your heart off to them because they already had their chance and it's really based off of pride, fear, things of that nature, then chances are your heart will not be able to fully open to the next person. So you don't want to carry that with you. You want to make sure whatever the outcome is, you heal, you remain open and you remain available to receive the man who is truly best for you. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here titled, You're Overlooking the Red Flags in a Man If You're Doing These Seven Things. Is when you are constantly sacrificing in the relationship. So first, let's start with understanding 